Please don't click off of the episode. I'm gonna speak about it. Maybe you don't know this. Nobody watching this video knows. Let's go back to being molested as a child. Ooh. So as a lot of people know in Cape Verde, we didn't have showers. Ooh. He used to get us, Ooh. me and another family member. I'm not gonna disclose. He or she would. I know this episode could help you. And if it's not you, then maybe somebody in your life. Hi guys! Welcome, Welcome to, to Dear, Dear Stranger. Stranger! I'm your host Nima. And I'm your host Jamila. Welcome to another episode of Dear Stranger. On the first episode of Dear Stranger, we spoke about mental health and we dug very deep into the different aspects of mental health. On this episode and every episode, our goal is to be super raw and organic and honest with you guys because we're still healing and I know we could always use each other and use you guys and we want to be able to help you. Today we're going to be talking about trauma and we really want to bring up the roots of trauma where it starts because trauma leads to mental health. Sure. Um, if you don't mind me going first, I'll share a little no, bit. Not at all. Go ahead. Ja, I don't know if you really know my story, but I haven't really shared it much with a lot of people. And this is the part that's crazy because you've been part of my life since I pretty much got to America. And I have never really sat down to tell Jamila my story. So a lot of I'm stuff. Hearing it with you guys. Yeah. So a lot of stuff you're going to hear for the first time. And that's the thing that baffles my mind is that it took me 32 years to share my story. And mm -hmm. I know that a lot of people are in the same boat. And can you imagine the pain that you're going through just because of not having the right conversation with the right people like we That's talked correct. about mm -hmm. on the first episode, right? Yeah. Um, and if you can have that conversation, we want to be able to start the conversations for you. Trauma for me started as a young girl. I wasn't raised with my mom. Jamila and I are cousins, prima hermana, we say, from our mother's side. And I wasn't raised with my mother. I'm not gonna sit here and tell my mother's story. That's for my mother to do. But from my point of view as her daughter, um, it was tough for me. It was tough for me because seven days old, she kind of gave me away to my dad's side of the family. And from then on, I was raised by my aunts, my uncles, and my grandmother pretty much. And I remember I used to, I feel like that's the first rue for me was not mm -hmm. having my mom by my side because I'm a mother now and I've gone through some stuff we sure all of us have, all of us have. Yeah. and I look at my daughter and even when I was at my lowest point where I had to reach out to Jamila to come get my daughter and that was the first time I ever done that I always told myself it doesn't matter what I'm going through in life I'm always my daughter's always going to be there with me like we go we gonna ride or die that's it because I understood that pain of not having my mom and so I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I remember having moments of my life laying on my grandmother's couch. My mom would call me periodically when she went to Portugal, like we would talk. And after I was done talking to her, I would sit on the couch and just cry. Even though like I had a um, crazy amount of love around me, my aunts treated me like I was theirs, but I would just cry. I would just sob because I didn't have my mom. There's that, that little piece missing yeah it was, a, it huge was a big piece, piece. Yeah. yeah and that's where trauma for me started and from there on it just I had no sense of love and uh, my my childhood I didn't really get to uh, live as a child I felt like my childhood was taken away from me I got molested at the age of three I'm not here to be messy so I'm not gonna say anybody to protect characters and people but molestation started for me at the age of three when a man um, started to rub his thingy thingy on my tutu, on my thing. I don't know how deep you want to go into things, but we're here to heal. So I'm not going to be too descriptive about things just because I don't know whose hands our video are going to be in. So we're going to protect other people listening to it as well because we want to be respectful. But that's where trauma started for me. Mm -hmm. And it was somebody that the family knew, you know. And from there on, that's... It's just been betray after betray, and I built a character of shushing, and 
it was not healthy for me because I blocked my childhood memories because of that and many other events happened after that so here I am married at a I got married in 2013 July 7 2013 and romance for me in the beginning was hard because I, we try to keep our marriage as sacred as possible. I mean, dating as sacred as possible until we got married. But when we started, Armando and I started to become physical with each other, I didn't want him to touch me. Because yeah, I, I felt like it wasn't okay. And that's such a beautiful union. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that goes to explain like how much trauma is a long-term, it's a long-term, what's the word I want to use? It's a long-term, Effect. Effect, right? yeah. Yeah, so I don't want to talk too much. I want to give you space to talk as well. Yeah, Where did trauma I mean, start for you? And um, for me, mm -hmm. I have to say that it started when I was a kid yeah. as well. So, like, for those of you that don't know me, I grew up with my mom, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I had a father. I mean, I still do. He's still alive. <laughs> right. But... <laughs> Um, I'm not going to see here and bash his character or anything like that because right. at the end of the day, he's still my father. Yeah. But I grew up seeing my mom being beat up by my dad firsthand. I was four years old. I remember it as it was yesterday. yesterday. So that, like, I grew up with that and, like, right now, like, my first defense mechanism when it comes to, like, anybody hitting people I black out yep. and God knows. Yep. God help whoever is near me. Get out the way because she's so. coming. She's still she's working on healing, y'all, okay? So that is the like part of my trauma from childhood. Yeah. So I relived those moments. Like my dad used to come home drunk mm. and beat up on my mom sometimes with a belt. Mm. And I grew up with like, oh, and no man gonna put his hand on me. And I make sure that, <laughs> I make sure they know um, beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a trauma for me. And every time, like, if anybody was to put their hands on me, I would relieve that trauma over and over again. I am overprotective when it comes to my girls and anybody abusing on them. Um, I think I would go to jail for any of them. And, Trust me, I have I have two daughters and two stepdaughters. I have four, so there's four of them all together. So, ain't nobody messing with them, even the boy. But that is how the trauma started for me. Yeah. And like now, it brought me to a point where I can't have the greatest relationship with my dad because mm. I lived, I lived that and mm. I saw it mm. and some people don't understand it. It's like, mm. oh, at the end of the day, he's still your dad. Yes, he's still mm. my dad. But what I lived, what I went through, nobody realized that that is, was a trauma for me. Right. Even though it was a trauma in itself for my mom, yeah. but it was a trauma for me. For so can, can you imagine what it did to your mom? You know? Yeah. Sometimes like we think like, uh, damn, I wish my mom would be this kind of person. Because like, I know I did that for me. But then we kind of forget like their story or maybe their story mm -hmm. was never told. Yeah, you know? and that it like it brings us back to what we said on the last episode. Yeah. We were sold to like to hush hush. Um, beating up on women back in Cape Verde was a thing. I mean, girl, it, it's still a thing. I mean it <laughs> You don't even gotta be in Cape Verde, let's be honest, sis. It's a thing and Ooh. um And we're not laughing to laugh because we don't agree in abuse. We're just saying, you know. Yeah. Making light of the situation, but addressing it at the same time. Yeah, and it's like, oh no, you, it, this happens with no. Yeah. Like, it doesn't happen. It shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be abusing, no guy should be abusing women and vice versa. Period. Because there is, believe it or not, there's women out there that beats up on their husband, their boyfriend, you name it. And on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. it shouldn't happen at all. We shouldn't um, make it, oh, it's okay and yeah. not talk about it. Mm -hmm. Like we've heard stories of people out in Cape Verde or in other part of the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, he got, she got beat up or he got beat up so bad by their partner to a point where now they're in a coma or Crazy. they dead. We've seen a lot of people died because of them being beat up. Yeah. So 
that for me it created a trauma that um i am still processing it yeah to try to like be able to forgive mm-hmm. my dad for bringing me that trauma and for doing that to my mom but it's really really hard for mm-hmm. me like i said we're still healing <laughs> lord <laughs> have mercy here. and um so it it's extremely hard and i know some of you yeah. um some people can relate and i don't know if it affected my brother like it did to me mm. but um everybody has a different um different way of thinking different mm-hmm. way of um taking trauma and for me that was a trauma in itself i started asking questions like instead of like uh pointing fingers and bashing people mm-hmm. i started reverting the question to i wonder what happened in that person's life to make that person that way. Mm-hmm. So that's the standpoint I look at molest- molestation, molestation with my accent. Because we tend to focus on women getting molested, but there are a lot of men that get molested too by men mm-hmm. also and by women because I've heard stories. I've had mm-hmm. friends that got molested that was vulnerable enough to tell me their stories. Mm-hmm. And we want to make y'all be seen and heard too and you might not be ready to talk about it and that's okay whenever you're ready but just know that we know yeah and we want to provide support whatever way that is to be able to provide support to women and men because it is not okay here we are 32 year old i'm 32 you're 36 and we are just now realizing that damn i I got some so much yes (laughs) i got some work to do sis Mm -hmm. But that all goes back to look seeking out for help, like mm-hmm. we said in the first episode, and looking for therapy and yeah. want to heal and wanting to be our the best versions of ourselves. Yes, you know? because yeah. we have to be the best version of ourselves in order to be a best version of ourselves to other people. Yeah, we can't make other people happy. We can't mm-hmm. make other. We can't make anybody content without us healing and going through the healing process Mm -hmm. i know sometimes your kids your husband they go through the healing process with you yeah and it's the hardest stage especially when you're married it's the hardest stage of your Mm -hmm. uh, of your marriage and lack of understanding too mm -hmm. like if you don't understand it's hard yeah go ahead so it's a like i i can personally say that um my it hasn't been easy like Mm -hmm. sometimes my husband doesn't understand my journey doesn't understand that there's trauma that i'm still dealing with that i need to like and it comes to like sabotaging sometimes you sabotage your own relationship because of trauma hello we do things that without thinking sometimes you're like like for in my case for example I, and that's I'm that like, stigma i'm sorry but that's that thing we mm-hmm. have to break because the thing like no it's all putaria you wanted to do this putaria means like freshness like right mm-hmm. it's all like they don't understand that trauma really plays out like that sorry it keep does. going because you're going the right direction girl say it it does mm-hmm. and so it's like they don't understand mm-hmm. and like we said in the first episode mm-hmm. if you don't understand mental illness then a lot of like people in our community doesn't understand it so in order for you to mm-hmm. understand people going through their trauma um going through the healing process you need to be able to understand what they're going through what they lived and how they affected him yeah them. what happened in that person's life mm-hmm. again that that will save you so much stress yeah you know ask the question let people tell their story don't judge yeah it, but it's not a, a justification to be like oh um i did this because of my trauma so it's it's not that there's right. certain things that you'll be able to like you you even ask yourself that question right why the hell did i do this what, Girl, like, you know how why? many times i've done that? i'm and, like hey, why did you do that like what was the point of that yeah but there's other stuff that you do constantly like thinking like yeah i'm gonna do this right and that is not part of you what reliving your about. trauma and and all of that that's so, on purpose i just felt like i had to kind of explain it the two right right and just to go into to a little bit of trauma for me too mm-hmm. and Nima you don't know this and nobody watching this video knows oh. but it's 
it is it's something that I like been working on and I just started working with my therapist on it and I said I'm gonna speak about it you sure oh, okay. I was gonna ask you because you don't have to talk about anything yeah you know? and I was like I'm gonna speak because for the longest time trust me I'm 36 years old and right, right, right. I was not ready to talk about it or anything mm. like that so let's go back to being molested as a child Ooh. so sometimes we are sexually assaulted sexually abused mm. by a close family friend mm. so when I started talking to my therapist about it mm-hmm. she, I kept saying in, um, in our culture she was like how like explain it to me mm. so back when I was four or five years old we I had this um, I still have but it's this cousin uncle the, um, on my mom's side of the family hmm. that um, so as a lot of people know in Cape Verde we didn't have showers we didn't have showers no. at our home a mm-hmm. lot of the times we used to take bucket a cup Little. with like a, a bucket of water and just mm-hmm. take a shower so anytime somebody would come and take you to bring to um, take you to a place to shower mm-hmm. and as a kid you're all excited because you're gonna take a shower and you like you don't it's something you don't have it at home mm-hmm. so um, he used to work at this um, liceo at this it's kind of like a high school high school yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so he had the keys to like the shower the locker rooms Ooh, and stuff mm-hmm. so Ooh. he used to um, get us Ooh. me and another family member I'm not gonna disclose Ooh. who she is mm. but another cousin of ours and um, used to bring us to that and she he or she would take turns between me and my cousin oh, and it was for the longest time I shut down like I closed that part the chapter like it never happened in my life it because and this is what kind of like when it first came out um, my brother said something to my dad because my mom was already here in America we were left back there (laughs) my brother said something to my dad and he pretty much made it seem like it was your fault oh that's that that's that that's that shit yeah excuse my language oh girl go ahead so it was your fault you did this and so he beat me up and Ooh. ever since then, at six years old, you're not processing that. Oh, God. And for you to, like, for it to come out to your parents and for your father to act that way, it creates a trauma on top of another trauma. Girl, that's a trauma, distrust, I mean, dishonor, like, girl, no protection. Yes. That is everything And I felt around. unprotected. So that is why I kept quiet. I kept quiet. I never talked about it. My mom till this day doesn't know. She'll probably know if she watches this video. Mm. Like nobody in my family knows. And the other cousin, I felt like nobody knew that ever happened to her. Can I point something out real quick? Because look, let's talk about character real quick because that has a lot to do with it, right? Mm Mm-hmm. The same, a lot of the same people that we put on pedestals and a lot of people put on pedestals, those are the people that end up doing things harmful, right? Mm -hmm. I say that to say this, to break it down. Don't put people on pedestals because, hmm, how do I say it? You would never think that that person would do something like that, right? No. We're so quick to be like, killer, that like, person? No. But don't. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. in Cape Verde, you know, like, there's no there's no job. So if you have a job, you're like the greatest thing on earth. So like to be working at a high school and whatever. So you were the greatest person on earth. Right now, I can't even bear to hear his name. Ooh. Or like, nobody knows who this person is because I never said, I never said anything and I never told um, but now <laughs> the world knows yeah. and um, and so my first experience with like telling somebody or like coming out to somebody until it was pretty much created another trauma on top of the trauma that I had already lived at five years old so that is the reason why I shut down and I never told anybody my therapist told me you need to like at least tell somebody 
tell somebody that you trust. So, and I told her, I was like, I think I would feel better telling it on the podcast and telling it as a story because I know in our community, a lot of girls, a lot of guys, a lot of has had that trauma before in the past. And a lot of the times it's a family member. It's a, it's a close family members that we have and speak up because it's not okay. No, it's not not. okay. And if I was to go back knowing what I know now, I would have, I don't know, I would have said it. I would have like talk about it to to everybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, but it's like, and the same breath you say that we have to take back a step because we're three and four. Mm-hmm. What the hell do we know about communication at that? Yeah, it is not your fault at mm-hmm. that age. You're a child yeah. You can't think for yourself. You can't make decisions for yourself. You don't mm-hmm. even know what is what for what? Yep, you and know, it's so like, you really it used to be like what uh, do you do and now like I don't really like locker rooms showers like in the locker room like the that is the hardest thing for me i don't take showers in in no locker rooms or anything because it just it's a trigger for me so i that is something so that is something that i am still processing and hopefully in the near future i'll be able to like break that um that cycle of like it's not a trigger anymore. I'm gonna to have to face it. Yeah. But as of right now, it's still things that I'm processing. And like I said, I'm 36 years old and I'm still doing that. So don't feel as you're you're never gonna be able to heal, or you always yeah. gonna have that. You need to be able to heal for yourself. Heck yeah, you deserve that. Mm-hmm. And thank you for sharing that. Thank you for your vulnerability yeah, to I, share that. I felt mm-hmm. like I needed to share it because yeah. like I said, we created the show. We needed to be transparent oh. and it's not like just your regular show yeah. where people come and talk about what mm-hmm. trauma is, what mental health is yeah. and not give you examples and people sometimes that hasn't gone through They don't know like what the hell it is. So, um, I have first hand and Nima has first hand. So yeah. we know, um, how it is that how are you feeling so there goes um what um trauma is yeah. and how it can affect you on your relationship and with with just anybody mm-hmm. relationships in general yeah. um especially when you're like you were like sexually abused or sexually mm-hmm. molested mm-hmm. it's a trauma that you carry with you for the rest of your life it um, disrupts your identity in a it sense, does i feel like and you're gonna mm-hmm. have to like throughout your life you build your own coping mechanism mm-hmm. and sometimes we tend to build a, a coping mechanism that is not the way of dealing with it mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. for example we turn to substances yeah oh ooh, so, girl. <laughs> which is our next topic um, you heard our story, and um, I hope this served to like shed some light into some of you to speak up. And trust me, you are going to feel better when you talk about it. Yeah. And don't hide it. Um, and like I said in the first episode, if you need to reach out to somebody, reach out to us. Yeah. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, reach out on, on our um, IG page. Mm-hmm. We'll be able to um, to respond back to you, yeah. to talk to you, mm-hmm. and um, our goal is to eventually get um, a group of girls together yeah, I was say that. for a, a night or whatever to kind of like go through, talk, yeah, like and kind of share ideas yeah. amongst each create, other. Create create a woman empower women's empowerment movement. We want that for us for I feel like we need that Mm -hmm. I like support you like support and still we have each other in our lives but you know the more support you have the the better Mm -hmm. it is and we want to be there for you we want to be able to do life with you because we understand the pain and trauma is not just sexual abuse trauma is not not just physical abuse. I give you guys kind of like two different examples yeah of um, what trauma could be yeah but there's a lot to trauma there's a lot to it and um you need to be able to like and sometimes you might not even realize that was a trauma for you and until you sit and talk about it like oh my god this has affected me so much 
That's why conversations are important. Mm -hmm. yes. And we want to do that. We want to start conversations that you, you know, that could yeah. help you be a better version, the highest version of yourself. Of yourself. Yeah. I kind of like a table talk for girls. Yes. <laughs> Um, thank you guys so much for watching. We love you. We appreciate your support. Please, please, please share our videos with whoever because you really never know. We really want to get our message across the world to anybody. It's not just Cape Verdeans, anybody. Yeah. You know, we just speak in terms of our culture because that's who we are and we see our culture for what mm -hmm. it is and we need healing. We need to break those generational curses. We need yes. to stop the shushing. We mm -hmm. need to put a backbone and talk. Yes, that's correct. I knew Jamila, Jamila's my cousin, y'all. I knew her for pretty much all my life. I never knew mm -hmm. until today that she went through that. Yeah. And thank you again for sharing that because now, you got to tell me what I can do to support you. Yeah, and it's you it, know? and it goes back to like let me just speak a little bit about like we tend to hide. Like yeah. we're all like happy and giggly and all of that, but we hide our sorrows, we hide our pain. Um really well sometimes that mm -hmm. it's like, oh my god, I don't want to keep hiding it anymore. Right. I'm not going to sit here and smile and pretend I'm okay when deep down I'm not okay. Period. So, thank you, girl. To us, healings and our soft girl. Yes. Era. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Until Bye. next episode. Until next time. Love you. Love you, guys. Bye.